Hello everyone. I pray that God is blessing you and you are having a blessed day. Church, today I'll be preaching from the book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 5. It said, In those days it did not rain on the earth. There was not a man to till the earth. The reason why there was not a man to till the ground is because Adam had not sinned yet. So there was no need to send the Savior out into the world because Adam had not sinned. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 23, we see that after Adam fell, the Lord sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground. Now, it was not Adam that God sent from the garden. It was the last Adam, Jesus, 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. Jesus was sent from the garden, not Adam. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24, we see that God drove out the man. God drove Adam out. Jesus was sent. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 3, we see that God sent his son. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 37, Jesus was the sower of the seeds. So he was the tiller of the ground. He sowed the word of God. Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. Job 38 and 28, Job says, has the, the rain a father? Yes, the rain has a father. Jesus is the rain. Psalm 72, chapter 72 and verse 6, He shall come down like the rain. Read the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and 10, and Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. Now in Exodus chapter 16 and verse 4, we see that God rained bread from heaven in the days of Moses. But Jesus tells us in the book of John chapter 6 and verse 32 through verses 51 that he is the true bread. He said he is the living bread. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45. God reigned on the just and the unjust. Jesus is the rain. The former and the later rain. He is the rain, the bread that God rained down from heaven. He is the living bread, the bread of life, his body. Even Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45 is showing us the mercy of God. That the sun shines on the just and the unjust. The rain rains on the just and the unjust. God is merciful even to those that do not accept him as their Lord and Savior. He waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Someone uh, left me a comment asking me when my mother passed, was she saved? I preached the gospel to my mother for many years. And uh, my mother was always in good health. And she was 48 and she started going to church with me. And Preston and I preached that gospel to her to sometimes 3 o'clock in the morning. Because I can preach this gospel church. I can preach it all night long, I tell you. I might get a little thirsty and a little choked up from my voice, but I can still preach this gospel. And uh, my mother had never been baptized. And she got baptized in April of 1983. And she started getting sick. And she started getting worse, and I prayed for her. We prayed for her. And she didn't get better. And uh, she went to the doctor and they said she had cancer. That once she was three years old, she had pneumonia that scarred her lung. And if she never had started smoking, she'd still be alive today. And the doctor says, we asked where does she have the cancer? And he said, no, you should be asking me where does she not have cancer? He said he was amazed that she had never been in any pain because the cancer was advanced. But we knew, we knew God was waiting on her. He was waiting on my mama to get baptized and to serve him. 
Don't let me cry, Lord, now. And when she was laying on her bed and she was about to cross over into the promised land, she looked up and she started screaming. Woo, he's beautiful. Oh, if you could see him. If you could just see him. He's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, he's gorgeous. And that's all she just kept saying. She said, oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready, Lord. And my father said, maybe she sees the pastor of the church because he died a few months before my mother did. And I said, no, she's not looking at Brother Corky. She's seeing Jesus. And after my mother went home to be with the Lord, that was definitely the hardest thing I had to endure. And I prayed for her to live, and she didn't. And I had to understand. Now, just because my mother went home to be with the Lord and God did not heal her and keep her alive, that does not stop me from praying for others. I still continue to have faith and believe in God. It does not shake my faith in God. It did not change the way I feel about my father. Because my ways are not his ways. And I don't have the understanding that God has. I do not possess the knowledge that God has. I do not question God in his wisdom and in his knowledge. I accept it. I accept the will of God just like Jesus did when he was praying that the cup would pass from him. He knew that he had to drink of the cup. It was the will of God. So when I pray for someone to be healed and they go home to be with the Lord, I do not question God because it is his will and not mine. But I still will continue to stand in faith and I will still continue to pray for those that are in need of prayer. And I thank God that he waited for my mama. And after she died, my dad stood at the fence talking with me. And, oh, he was a mean, mean man, I tell you. And he stood at the fence and he says, when I die, will I go to heaven? I said, nope, you're going to hell. And he said, why am I going to hell? And I said, because you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He said, I don't like the New Testaments because men wrote it. I said, who do you think wrote the Old Testaments? They were inspired by God. Men wrote what God told them to write down. And many years went by after the death of my mother and he passed in 2001. But before he passed, he had a dream and he told it to my sister. He said that he was pushing a wheelbarrow and he came to a cave, a cave of flames of fire. And he saw the devil standing at the cave and he says, come on in. I've been waiting a long time for you. And my dad said, no, God told me I didn't have to go this way, that I could go another way. And my dad turned the wheelbarrow around and his dream was over. And one of my brothers because all of my family saved, praise God. One of my brothers said that on my dad's deathbed, he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. I say to the church, don't wait until you're on your deathbed to accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Accept him now. Today is the day of salvation. Because you know what? You got to build that faith up. That faith comes. You don't want to be laying on your deathbed to to finally decide if uh, this is real or this ain't real, but or know God. But I know that when my dad accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior, I know that God received him because we serve a merciful God. Church, let me tell you this. So many people leave me comments about they being judged and condemned. You know what the Holy Spirit said to me? He said, Donna, do you possess the power to put someone in heaven or hell? And I said, no, my Lord, I do not possess that power. I never condemn anyone. I never judge anyone. Because I'm in the same boat with you. I need a Savior 
just like you do. And we found out that we serve a merciful God. That God loved you so much, he sent you his son. That they beat him, plucked the beard, his beard. They plucked the hairs out of his beard. They whipped him with those whips. They nailed him to the cross. God had to look down from heaven to see what they did to his son. But he loved you so much that he wants to condemn you to hell. Church, we serve a God that loves you. That gave his son for you. That God has done everything he can do to save you. To call you. To bring you to him. Amen, church. Today is the day of salvation. Church, let us be merciful. Let us be loving and kind to one another. Not condemning. Not judging. Not pointing any fingers at anyone. Church, we are guilty. But it's by the blood of Jesus. The same blood that washes us and makes us clean. God wants those that are lost. He is searching for those that are lost. Amen. Let's go get those lost sheep and let's bring them in to the kingdom of God. God bless you, church. God bless you.